Hello, I'm Pastor Dwayne, and this is my beautiful bride, this great gift of God in my life, Miss Cameron. And we come personally here to invite you into one of our live services. From time to time, we like to broadcast the live service. Cameron and I love to sit here and teach you the word and communicate with you on this level. But some of our viewers contact said, man, we just love when you preach mm -hmm. and when you stand in the pulpit and the anointing comes through. So today we're going to join one of our live messages that we've preached recently. And I know and believe that God's going to use it greatly in your life. And it'll be an encouragement to you, strengthen you in your walk. And I pray God that the, the, the anointing of heaven will come through this screen Amen. and touch your life as he touched many lives in this service. So join us today in this live broadcast of a message that God has given me. Hope you are blessed. Um, so let's move into this. I want to move into our service today. And um, even though pastor's not here, I want you to know that just because he's not here doesn't mean that Jesus is not here. And, and the thing is this, I mean, I, I do understand that our pastor carries a wonderful, uh, heavy anointing from the Lord. So I'm not minimizing that. But what I'm telling you is that there is something special for you here today, even though the head of our house is not here. However, Bishop McEwen is, what, what, right? So, uh, but, but this is the thing. The Lord kind of reminded me of uh, Psalms 100, by the way. And uh, I'm just going to read it for, to you, super short. And I'm not going to read every verse. Uh, but the first thing that he brought to my mind was on verse uh, number two. And it says, worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. And listen, some of us cannot sing. Can we just be honest? But to the Lord, it doesn't matter as long as your heart is in the right place. You know how your kids sometimes will dance around your house just singing? And sometimes you just look at them and you go, man, they're so cute. I mean, I made that. But they're so cute. And there's this joyful thing that happens in your heart when you watch a, ch a child just sing and just love. And um, so anyway, so that's the first thing that the Lord reminded me of. But then I kept reading, or reading, I'm sorry, <laughs> Mexican came out. Um, so verse 4, okay, says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. See, there is an etiquette when you come into the room, into the uh, throne room, I mean. There is this etiquette that you need to have in your heart. So it says, enter his gates with what? Thanksgiving and his score with what? With praise, okay? And give thanks to him and praise his name. See, this, the thing that the Lord was revealing to me when I was reading that is that not only do we have an etiquette, but when you come into his throne with praises in your lips, with thanksgiving in your heart, and all you can do really is, is surrender your heart to him. And then when you get into that position, what happens is that your heart, your spirit, and your mind all align and realize that you are worthy worshiping the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and that there is nobody like him that can compare to anything that you've tasted that you've seen that you've touched that you've experienced so when you come in that etiquette of coming into the throne of God knowing that you have Thanksgiving in your heart regardless of what's happening in your true life out there in the world and you have praise regardless of your pain of your suffering or even your victories there's just something right there that your heart goes you know what God whatever you want I'll give to you see when you get in his presence you can't help but to say what do you want from me I'll give it all to you so this morning I want you to stand and I want to encourage you okay I want to encourage you to praise him and come in with that etiquette into the throne room of whatever is going on in your life guess what it doesn't matter because Jesus is here and it doesn't matter because he will align your life according to his word so right now Holy Spirit we praise you we, we just come with that etiquette Lord with that desire in our hearts 
to give you thanksgiving with our hearts and our lips, to praise your name, to exalt the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, you are faithful regardless of what we experience or what we go through, Jesus. So this morning, we just tune our hearts and our minds to you. And we give you everything that you may want. We want to give you everything that we are this morning, Jesus. And we praise you in Jesus' name. Now we're going to do communion at the close of the service this morning. Because it's very important and very critical to what I'm going to share with you today. And I'm just going to give you a little advance warning. If you've got a roast in the oven, it's going to burn. If you have a luncheon appointment, you're going to be late. Because what I have to share with you today is a word that God gave me on that Thursday night. And I wanted to, I wanted to give it. The Lord said, hold it for Sunday. So it's very specific. Some of you are going to love this. Some of you are not. But I will tell you, I will tell you, that just as sure as balloons fly, and just as sure as balloons pop, and just as sure as your enemy would have everything that he could do to destroy you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody stretch your hands this way. Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Just play a little bit, Robert. Hang on just a moment. The Lord just told me to tell you, he says, tell me your name again. Cynthia. Cynthia. The Lord just told me to tell you, sis, that you have found your place. But more than that, you have found your future. Huh. And the abandonment, the abandonment and the forsaken feeling that you have had and the unworthy feeling that you have had, the Lord says today that you will feel abandonment because he taught me this almost 12 years ago that abandonment is not being left or forsaken only but it is also being given your freedom today God has given you your freedom to become yourself to be who you are and not who everybody else wants you to be or thinks that you should be today you have found your place rejoice 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 hallelujah Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody say, God is good. God is good. And so am I. So Amen. Amen. Glad you got that right, Stevie. So good to see everybody. We, we miss those who are not here, but we don't feel sorry for them. They're in the Holy Land, but it's not any more holy there than it is here. Amen? Because the presence of God is here. Thank you for, for being here this morning. And it's an honor, it's always an honor to come into this house and be a part of what God has been doing and what God is continuing to do. And every time I drive on this property, I just feel the presence of God, and I'm excited about our future. Amen? Amen. I ask you this morning, just be patient with me. If you need to, uh, if you need to go get a sandwich and come back, come on. Uh, I'm not going to be very long today, but uh, I'm going to share what is in my heart, however long that takes, because it's just so relevant in order for us to walk to the next level of anointing. I don't agree with the saying that with every level there's a new devil. Don't agree with that because it's the same old devil on every level. They just multiply. Okay? 
same same tra uh, tracks, <laughs> same tricks, same basic principles. The enemy is a liar. The devil's a liar. And the goal of a lying spirit is not to get you to tell a lie. It's to get you to believe a lie. So what I want to share with you today is how important the anointing is on your life. And I want to show you that you are anointed. You say, well, Bishop, what am I anointed to do? What am I anointed to do? What am I anointed for? What is my purpose? I've had so much pain. Has anybody went through some pain? Anybody been through some hurt? How many of you have been through hurt more than once? Yeah. How many of you went through hurt just this morning when you looked in the mirror? <laughs> I got up this morning and looked in the mirror and said, that cannot be true. The pain and suffering and circumstances, tribulation, the Bible says you can't walk in this world without facing tribulation. But there's an anointing that God has given each of you. And we're to walk in that anointing. Amen. Now, Michelle and the kids aren't here this morning uh, because of the snow and the ice. Daisy's gym schedule has gotten all changed around and messed up, and it's competition week. And uh, so uh, they're doing gymnastics today. Uh, I did all my gymnastics yesterday. <laughs> you should see my floor routine. It is amazing. <laughs> the miracle of it is that I can get up. That's the miracle. Yeah. That's the miracle. I was changing planes in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, what weekend was it? Not, it was last weekend, and uh, I believe it was. Changing planes in Atlanta, Georgia. Got off the plane and went to from Concourse B to Concourse E. And when I stepped off the train and stepped onto the escalator, I stepped up on the escalator, and I guess I got my foot too close or a bag too close or something. And as I started up the escalator, the escalator came up, and I went down. I hung my bag or something, I twisted, and when you bump your hind end on something, you know, you expect it to move. I, my, well, that's a whole other story. But when, and escalators don't move on the side. They move on the handle. And so right there, bumped myself against that escalator, and when I did, it twisted me around, and I just started this way. I fell for 32 minutes. I couldn't stop. There was anything I could do. And I knew it was going to hurt myself really bad. Because if you've, if you've been on an escalator lately, they're not really that soft. And so these, these edges, and, and so my bag twists, and, and Holy Spirit says, jump. Well, I didn't have time to argue. So I just jumped, and when I did, I, my bag got between me and the next few steps, and I was able to bounce off my bag, land on this right knee, and hit this side of me, and thank God it's the cushion side, and so hit this side, and I've got marks and scratches and everything else from that escalator, but I jumped straight up, and the amazing thing is the 30 people that were going to get on the escalator behind me went to the one to the left, it just started all the way up, and they're watching the show, <laughs> and I jumped to my feet, and I had an audience, and if you give me an audience, I'm going to say something, I said, no charge for the show, folks. And there's just proof that you can go down an up escalator. <laughs> but I, you know, it was, it was just the Lord had his hand on me because it could have been hurt very bad. And uh, so I'm very thankful, very thankful for, for my gymnastics ability. <laughs> and that's what, it's what saved my life. But I've got a few scars and scratches to show you uh, if you want to see them. Thank God you don't. But Michelle and the kids, uh, they wanted to tell you that they love you today and, and uh, that, that Daisy is trying hard. If she, gets, she got second in the state last year. If she gets uh, the top three this year, she will get to go to Simone Biles' gym. Wow. She's excited about that. I prophesy over her every night. She is my little gold medalist. She's going to get her picture on the Wheaties box and take care of her daddy and pay his bills the rest of his life. Amen. 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 And uh, I'm, just, I'm just so very, very thankful. So very thankful. Many have asked what I've been doing. Somebody asked me the other day. They said, what do I call you now? Bishop, apostle, pastor? Uh, do I call you music producer? Do I call you a politician? What do I call you? 
And I said, well, you can just call me a spiritual arsonist because I'm going to do everything I can to start spiritual fires Amen. everywhere that I am. Yeah. And somebody asked her this morning, what do I call you? And I said, please call me for dinner. <laughs> My comedy routine is getting not as good as it used to be as it said. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in all sincerity, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm not big on titles. Never have been. Uh, but if... If, you, if I'm just Steve to you, then you'll get what Steve can give you. Right. If I'm pastor to you, you get what pastor can give you. If I'm bishop to you, you, you understand those anointings. Yes, sir. Old Steve's not going to give you much, except a hard time. I promise you that. Some of you know that. Amen. Some of you deserve it. <laughs> but whatever you feel led in your heart to call me, that is fine. I appreciate Pastor Dwayne and... Lady Cameron, for allowing me to be here this morning and being a part of what God is doing. This is my home. Amen. This is my home, and it always will be. And uh, I'll update you on some of those things later. Uh, I'm working strongly with Senator Rapert, uh, Senator Jason Rapert, and the National Association of Christian Lawmakers, very involved in that process. And uh, matter of fact, there's some incredible things that are happening that I can't tell you right now, but they're coming. Uh, and uh, let, me just, let me just declare to you today that in America, you better get ready and be prepared for your anointing to come forth because you're going to need your anointing. You're going to need the anointing of God on your life. You're going to need God's anointing in order for you to survive and walk to the next level. If you're looking for a platform and a place to be just so that you can look famous or look good or be close to hang on to somebody's coattails or ride somebody's coattails, I'm promising you there are several coattails that are going to fall down yeah. in... Uh, amen so focus on you don't try to impress somebody else focus on you and that's what today is about I want to encourage you to focus on what God's given you turn in the Bible uh, in your Bible with me to Luke chapter 4 verse 16 Luke chapter 4 verse 16 it is 1120 right now uh, if you'll stay with me till 140 we will be good and be out of here you're not laughing anymore that's a bad joke now We've used it. We've used it twice. <laughs> Stand for the reading of the word. I'm reading out of the King James Version today. Uh, doesn't, doesn't make any difference what version that you read, as long as you read it. Can I get an amen? amen? All right, look at verse number 16. The Bible says, And he came to Nazareth. What's this phrase? Where he had been brought up. He came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. This is a calendared day. This is his appointed time. He has returned to Nazareth because it is his day on the calendar to read. Jesus was a rabbi. You know that. Dr. Miller's taught on that very, very much. Jesus was a rabbi, and it was his appointed day and appointed time, and that scripture was already appointed to read. You know, it wasn't... Just randomly open your Bible, open the scroll, and point to your finger to it. It was on that calendar for that day and for that moment. And so Jesus was to read this verse on this appointed day at this appointed time where he had been brought up. Because as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. There was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah or Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to, everybody say to, to. preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fast and known him. And he began to say to them, this day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. He's not standing on the platform. He's sitting in the synagogue. He's read this verse. He's handed the book back. He's got himself down and sat down where he belongs. And everybody's looking at him like a mule looking at a new gate. We've heard this verse a thousand times, but today it's different. In their mind, they recognized something that was different. 
Here's what he says. He began to say to them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness and agree with him. And wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is not this Joseph's son? And remember, Jesus has just come out of the wilderness. In, in these previous verses, this is where after 40 days he's tempted of the devil. And then he uses the famous phrase, it is written, it is written, it is risen, written. And then he goes back to his hometown. And then he goes into the synagogue, reads this passage. And they are saying, it's not this Joseph's son. Are you with me? Yes. And he said unto them, you will surely say unto me this proverb, physician, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you the truth, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah or Elias when the heaven was shut up. Three years and six months. Now, I'm going to just throw you that for just a moment. I've never noticed that the heaven was shut up. I've heard it was shut up for three years. But I've never heard it was shut up for three and a half years. Does that ring a bell with anybody? Oh, yeah. Three and a half years. Yeah, yeah. Those of you who catch on study it, those of you who don't, go look it up. When great famine was throughout all the land, but, not, but unto none of them was Elias sent, or Elijah sent, save unto Sarepta, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. The word Sarepta there is Zarephath. It's a city in the area of Zarephath. And the word Sarepta literally means, <laughs> I'll get into that in a minute. And many lepers were in Israel at the time of Elias the prophet. None of them was cleansed, saving Naaman the Syrian. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath, rose up and thrust him out of the city. Now the ones that were astounded at him are now mad at him. If you're going to walk in the anointing, you can't walk on eggshells at the same time. Amen. And some folks are going to get mad at you. And led him out unto the brow of the hill whereon this, their city was built, and they might east or might cast him down headlong. But, I must say but. but. This is the final verse. He... Passing through the midst of them went his way. Amen. It doesn't say he fought his way out. It doesn't say that they let him go. It says that they led him to a city or to a precipice. And the Bible says that he passed right back through them. He let them push him so far. He didn't turn around and say, whoo! He didn't turn around and throw oil at him. He just turned around and with his anointing, stepped right back out. You can't push me. You can't push me down. You can't knock me down. You can't throw me down. I give my life, and when I'm ready to give it, I'll give it. And until then, I'm going to walk in my anointing, and every demon and every enemy of my life can't touch me because I'm Hammer didn't say it first. Jesus did. Can't touch this. <laughs> Father, for the next few moments, help us to understand, Lord, how important it is to realize our anointing. And the key to operating in that anointing is a simple key. But it's a key we all struggle with. Today, we're going to reveal that. And God, we're going to walk in our anointing. We give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. And amen. You may be seated. The word sarepta there means literally smelting. 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 I'm like, what in the world is, I thought smelting was an Arkansas word. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm a smelting. Haven't been smelting very much lately. But, <laughs> but the word smelting there is a little place where ore and iron and minerals are extracted from rock. And Zarephath, or this place in Zarephath, which is translated smelting, is a place where the minerals and the 
and the iron and the ores would literally be extracted because of the heat, and they would come out of the rock, and there was a separation place. It was a place of separation, a place of sorting, uh, of sifting and sorting. It was a place where you were not the same anymore. Once you went to that place, it was a place of desertion, a place of desert, a place of difficulty, but it was a place of separation and drawing out of the good and throwing away the bad. Can I get an amen? How many know that there, there's a saying that the cream always rises to the top? There is something inside of you that God is trying to draw out. If you're going through some heat and you're going through some trouble, what's that saying about the egg and the potato and the water? You guys know what I'm talking about? There, there's a saying about the same water that softens the potato hardens the egg. Well, there you go. It makes carrots and coffee. I can see where our mind is. We're already thinking about lunch. All right. So. But watch this. God has anointed me to do something. In verse 18, and in Isaiah 61, God says and prophesies, and Jesus is reading this, and this prophecy about himself. He says, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me Two. Now don't get out, don't don't go anywhere after the two, the T O. Make sure we get our twos right. Our T O, our T O O, and our T W O. It's kind of like they are there, there, and there. Something like that. Right? Are y'all here? God has anointed. Thank you so much for joining us today for our live broadcast. I pray that you were blessed by the message that was brought to you by my husband. And I pray that this week will be an anointed week for you and be blessings upon you. And Cameron and I want to personally invite you to join us live and in person every Sunday at 1030 at 6702 TP White Drive, Cabot, Arkansas. We'd love to meet you, give you a gift, and thank you for joining us. And thank you for listening to this message from our live service. Till next time, we'll see you on VTN. Thank mm-hmm. you.